Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the brand new Intel Core i7-6800K. This is part of the new Intel Broadwell E family of processors, and it comes at the very bottom end of the spectrum, both when it comes to overall specifications of being a six core with 12 threads and at the price point that's most competitive. Now, in terms of overall features, we have 15 megabytes of level three cache. The core clock frequency is 3.4 gigahertz and it can turbo up to 3.8 gigahertz, but it has a fully unlocked multiplier and we're definitely going to be doing some overclocking comparison to see what the performance is like compared to stock frequencies. Of course, we're using the same socket LGA 2011-3 and we're actually using the brand new Gigabyte X99 Designer LX motherboard. This is a board specifically designed for the new Broadwell E lineup of uh, Intel processors and we're going to have a full in-depth review of this board. You can check that out in the description down below. Some of you guys who are wondering what the difference between the 6800K is compared to the other CPUs in this uh, Broadwell E lineup, you can see that there's a chart over here. Basically, we have a 6-core chip compared to some of the other processors, which are 8 and 10 cores. We also have a lower uh, frequency compared to the 6850K. Additionally, we only have 28 lanes of PCI Express compared to the other processors, which have 40 lanes. Of course, uh, the big appeal of the 6800K will certainly be its uh, price point. You can probably pick these things up for around the uh, low $400 mark, which is uh, definitely very competitive compared to the other processors. It's definitely going to get your foot in the door of building a pretty powerful Broadwell eBay systems without completely breaking the bank. Now, in terms of the overclocking experience, I, we managed to actually push the CPU up to 4.5 gigahertz with the voltage set to just under 1.5 volts, and it's pretty stable. The temperature does get pretty high uh, based on prime after 45 minutes, you can see that it hit about 86 degrees C compared to 58 degrees C when you're just using the stock frequency. And in terms of cooler, we use the Master Liquid Pro 240, which is a pretty decent closed loop water cooling system. And in terms of the overall power consumption during the GTA 5 benchmark, uh, the maximum power consumption just on the CPU hit about uh, 60 watts on the stock configuration. And when you overclock it, it does consume quite a lot more power at 115 watts. And when when you pin the CPU at 100% load on Prime 95 uh, at the stock configuration, the CPU pulls just under 100 watts based on our measurement. And the power consumption does definitely go up drastically when you're overclocking it, as you can see, at 179 watts. Now, Moon, let's actually talk about the performance of results between the stock and overclock settings. First, taking a look at Geekbench 3, which is going to isolate our single core and our multi core performance. And as you can see right now, pretty big difference between the stock frequencies and the overclock setting set to about 4.5 gigahertz, uh, both on the multi-core and on the single core perspective. And uh, same result kind of goes for Cinebench R15. We can see that we get uh, just over a thousand points on uh, the stock frequency of about 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz. And when we overclock to 4.5 gigahertz, we get 1361 points based on uh, this test. Furthermore, for people that are going to use this processor for a multimedia applications, such as After Effects. I basically render out the same project on uh, both uh, the stock and overclock settings, and I got about 14% performance bump on the overclock. Uh, as you can see over here, the uh, render took uh, just a couple of seconds faster. Same thing goes for rendering out 4K video in Premiere Pro. My project export time was around 2 minutes 18 seconds on the overclock side versus uh, 2 minutes 32 seconds on stock frequencies. But really, other than that, guys, that's really just a quick preview of what the 6800K is capable of. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people making new systems based around this CPU, especially at this price point. I think it's going to be a pretty popular system for both for people that like to do a lot of multimedia based applications as well as gaming. The big question will be, is this worth getting over the 6700K, which may only have four physical cores, but could give you an edge up when it comes to specific gaming performance because each of those cores are clocked quite a lot faster faster, especially if you're going to overclock. So we're going to have that exact video coming up very, very soon. Check out the link in the description if it's not out already. But other than that, guys, that's really it. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and thanks for watching. Take care.